Hello my friends, welcome to Anna's Wireless. Today we will be talking about Stefanotis and what to do to make it thrive when you buy it like this from the stores in full bloom and then suddenly it gets not really happy. So what's wrong, what to do? Hey everyone, I'm Anna and on this channel we're talking about plants and gardening. So if you are into plants, if you are growing plants, consider subscribing, click on the like button, bell button as always and share with your friends. So today we are talking about Stephanotis floribunda. This is actually a Madagascar jasmine, this is what people call it. And for many, many years I thought that this plant is actually a variety of jasmine, but no. Maybe it's called Madagascar jasmine just because of the shape of the plants, the, the fragrance of the, uh, sorry, the shape of the flowers and the fragrance of the flowers because it's, it, it has a very nice smell and it's a beautiful plant. Well, first of all, the leaves are very interesting. They are very thick. They are dark brown from, from the upper side and from another side, from the bottom, they are really very uh, interesting. They have these veins that you can see, very beautiful. The thing is that we buy these plants from the greenhouses, garden centers or local stores, most probably just like this. And they're growing on the twine you see uh, on the trellis with this twine, you see that it's kind of, um, yeah, you know, attached to this twine. Well, the thing is that these plants like indirect light and they need to grow in a very bright area, but not under the sun. The thing, uh, the problem with this plants, I think, is that people don't water it enough, which means they are underwatering it, just thinking that the leaves are so thick. Well, maybe they don't need that much water. However, if you keep it dry all the time, eventually it may even drop the leaves. So you need to think about um, not overwatering, of course, but you need to think about keeping the soil always a little bit moist so that your plant has enough um, humidity. You can also spray the plant, especially when it doesn't have blooms uh, anymore, because if you spray on the flowers, they will fade away um, quicker. And also these plants are most probably sold in these plastic pots, but it's a very good idea to, when you, when you repot them, it's very good idea to plant them in a clay pot. And I'm going to show you in the next video how to repot it because, uh, and actually the clay pots are so much better for these plants because uh, the clay pots will be breathing from all sides. And this way the soil will not be wet all the time. And in case you overwater it, it will uh, actually, the water will evaporate and the soil will get uh, drier quicker. If you put your plant in a very big plant, uh, the soil will be a lot for your plant. And again, the soil will stay wet for a longer period and it can cause root rot. And also if the plant is too big, your plant will stop flowering. Maybe it will not uh, be rotten. The roots may still grow and develop in a proper way. But if the pot is too big, the plant will not uh, flower. And of course, uh, you can always clean the leaves. But this is one thing that I want to mention here. You can clean your, the, the leaves from both sides just with water. You can take a cotton tissue or just take it and put it under the shower and clean the leaves, wash your plant. But the thing is that don't use the sprays. I know that some sprays are not harming the plants, but still they're clogging the pores, which are on the other side, um, bottom side of the, of the leaves. And I don't know, I don't like them. I've never used them and the leaves are still shiny. If your plant is happy, you don't really need this, you know, very shiny leaves. If the, if the leaves are happy, well, that's enough, right? And of course, if you want more of these plants, you can take cuttings easily. Just make sure that you have a node there. Put the cuttings in the water, they will give roots and then you can plant them. And also to the soil, you can add a little bit of uh, perlite to make it, you know, uh, to improve the quality of the soil. And also perlite helps uh, to preserve the water uh, to take. It takes actually basically what it does. It takes the excess of water into its granules uh, and then gives back to the soil when the soil is dry. And when you bring the plant home, you may want to repot it, but don't repot immediately when you bring it home, because first of all, and most probably your plant will be blooming. So wait until the flowers are done. And when your plant is already adjusted uh, to your conditions, repot it. And why? Because you see, first of all, that the plant here is just 
a little bit uh, weirdly planted to the side so that they can uh, make this uh, very circled kind of plant. I'm also going to repot it and I will show you in the next video how I'm going to repot it. It's very easy. There are two ways, especially if you're a beginner for this plant. There, there is a very easy way to repot this plant without transplant shock. I'm going to show you in the next video how to do this. And also, if you have any questions about this plant, you can write them in the comments and I will be really happy to answer them. But also, I have a question to you. So I want to remove this um, trellis here, but I'm not sure if it should grow hanging or if I need to make another trellis. So I would like to see your variants, your options, how you grow them. And maybe you can give me some cool ideas of how to grow this plant, how to shape this plant uh, after repotting. So please write all your comments, your suggestions in the comments. And as always, if anything in this video was useful for you, consider subscribing, click on the bell button, like button. And you can also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. And stay passionate about plants. See you next time.